Hello and welcome back to Podcast with a K. You're listening to 90.1 WECS FM. That was Super Cup by Lord. This is Carla with a K. We are uh, here for the penultimate episode of the podcast. It's been a long and phenomenal, fantastic time. Tonight's guest, Mac, back at it again. We're ending the show on a similar note to how we started the entire series, a.k.a. politics with a K. And who better than Mac, who also ends her name with a K. So, welcome Mac, back to the studio. Hello, I'm so excited to be back. Thank you for being here. What will we be talking about? Um, to no one's surprise, we will be talking about Roe v. Wade today. Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> um, before we get into such a heavy topic, is there anything else you would like to say? Um, for all the lovely people out there who are ending the school year, whether that is graduating or continuing their journey and their education, proud of you. This year was tough. Go us. And for the adults out there who haven't done any of that, congratulations for making it this far. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mac. All right. Mac, explain what we're discussing, please. All right, besties. So here we go. Basically what happened is there was a little draft leaked the other day by a company called Politico. And it talked about how the Supreme Court had voted on Roe v. Wade once again, because why do women deserve rights? And it was being voted to be overturned. The issue with this is that it doesn't necessarily mean that all women's rights are going to be taken away. It depends on the state now. So each state can vote what they choose from that whole situation. Basically, if like the Supreme Court gets rid of it, it's per se, right? So not only will that affect abortions, which is the main issue with a lot of people, because everyone's like, what about incest and rape and all these other things that most of the states that are choosing not to accept that part of the bill have issues with? It can also go on to affect things like contraception and hormones for people who are trans and just like so many other things and like um, medical issues that have to do with uh uteruses and stuff typically you have to take birth control in order to help those and those won't be an option anymore and it's overall very very bad but a lot of people are more upset that they are taking away the right to an abortion because most people see it as this is a religious thing not a scientific thing and in the united states religion and our laws are not supposed to mix so now we are starting yet another war over women and if we deserve basic human rights or not I mean, that's a that's a really concise summary, and I, I love the way that you ended it, because it's bizarre to me that living in the day and age that we do, yeah, I mean, admittedly, we did happen to be the generation of change, like our entire life is a transition from no rights to some rights, hopefully in the future, all rights, um, so that we can be all right. <laughs> I'm funny. Uh -huh. Anyway, um... Yeah, you know, like, science speaks for itself, and the laws are pretty elaborate and pretty intricate, but the championing cause that has dominated the newsfeed is very much abortion. And even if we were to focus on that one very uh, isolated issue that is covered under Roe v. Wade, um, the answer stays the same. Why does anyone care what anyone else does if it's not affecting you, yourself, as a person? Exactly. And... It's a bigger issue because it's, I keep hearing a lot of people say, why do we have International Women's Day or Gay Pride Month or things along those lines? Because they think because it's 2022, we don't have these issues anymore. And I wished I was that privileged to think the same way and that my life was so easy, I wouldn't have to think along those lines. But it's not like that. And I think it's so weird to advertise the United States as this safe haven for all of these other countries and then not only be like ah we want you but also immigration is really tough but also be so privileged in a sense that we feel it's okay to take away other people's rights just for fun because we there's no other consequences we don't have things like war or other things going on that they can just mess with that 
And I think that's so frustrating that we are so privileged that we're going backwards in our thinking. Yeah, it's it's become cyclical in a way. And in essence, it's kind of a result, I think, of overcorrection, if that makes sense, right? But it's not an overcorrection that is warranted because I think the issue that we are running into right now is very much so in which because we live in a two-party system, whenever one party is in charge, the other party feels the need to come back harder. And as a result of that, we get stuck in this phase of overcorrection. And here's what I'll say, all right? In America, in the United States of America, I will say, um, the left, as in Democrats, you know, the, the left that has become the ruling left, is not as left-leaning as you would think. If you were to have a line with, uh, you know, left a line thinking all the way on the left, right a line thinking all the way on the right, um, the left is currently very close to center. The right is very much so very far skewed to the right. And so whenever people say that, you know, conservative and tradition ideolo traditional ideology is being threatened, it's really not. We are trying to reach a point of neutrality. However, the right tends to be of the mindset that anything that isn't how things have been done in the past is a direct attack on our culture, on our system, on our beliefs as a country. And it's like, homie, None of this has anything to do with you. And for a party that is so adamant on individuals' rights and so adamant on the government letting people do what they want to do, they sure want to control what women are doing with their bodies. Are women not people? Do women not no. get the freedom of existence? No. Jane, that's I'm just crazy. in the kitchen. You're not even in the kitchen, Mac. You're in I'm your not. room. You I'm lied. Sorry, I lied. It's because you're a woman, isn't it? It's because I'm a woman. I have no brain. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean i know it's a taboo topic in very many circles um i remember being in the high school debate team and the topics we couldn't touch were uh religion and abortion pretty much that's it anything else was fair game and i always was kind of irked by that because i was like that's oh and i guess politics but i was like that's very interesting because, like you said earlier, it's kind of from a perspective of privilege to think you're not affected by laws. And I remember watching this documentary or something, and the uh, I guess the point in which it landed was that laws only exist for minorities and for the poor. And I was like, that's wild. Because it's true, you know, if you are the ruling elite, you don't have to worry about the laws, you make the laws. And this goes for people in government, in legislation, in uh, law enforcement, because you are the one that is, you know, enforcing the law. You're the one that's choosing what is right and what is wrong, what's close enough to following the law, what's close enough to a loophole for it to fly. And if you have money, you can simply pay off the fines. You can get out of jail. You can essentially go around this. And as always, the people who are affected by these changes in, in these court cases tend to be the impoverished and the minorities yes and these issues a lot of people don't think that voting is important in america and i get it our system for voting is really confusing and i literally had to take an ap class in high school to learn how our system works on for weeks and it still doesn't make the most sense but it's things like this where you voted for Trump initially in the first time that he ran. I get it. He wasn't in politics. He was slightly more appealing at the time because everyone was like, this is something new. This is something fresh. However, because Trump was president, he was able to appoint people in the Supreme Court and those people voted that Roe v. Wade gets overturned. So even though he's not in office, his effects are still affecting us today. So that's why when I say, like, I typically am not friends with people who have supported Trump, especially on this last 2020 run and stuff. It's not because I care what economics you care about or anything along those lines. It's I care because it's human rights that they're, you're affecting. It's women's rights. It's gay rights. It's immigration laws. It's so much more than that that affects people 
that I genuinely was so mad when I read that Roe v. Wade came out with this. And it wasn't even supposed to be released yet. But the Supreme Court said, yeah, this is happening. It's not happening yet, but it's happening soon. Go have fun. And all the women were like, is this the 1960s again? Like, what just happened? (laughs) (laughs) And so, like you said earlier, it goes past just abortion, which, again, is unfortunate that it's what's dominating the conversation. Like, this goes for any sort of, like, care towards women's reproductive rights, including if a woman is pregnant and wants to give birth, but is at risk of miscarriage, is at risk of losing her own life, is at risk of giving birth to a child that won't survive after being born. Like, there's things like that. And so if you want to touch that topic, there's an assortment of reasons why you should be on the side of supporting Roe v. Wade remaining as is, um, as well as, like you said earlier, access to, for example, birth control, which isn't necessarily always used for birth control. It's it's a hormonal uh, element that can be used to regulate a lot of different ailments that women suffer. Yeah, and and it also goes for things like sorry, not to cut you off. It also goes for things like um, breast cancer screenings and different like just day-to-day like health checkups that women need and need access to but without this you run the risk of that type of care becoming very expensive of course Planned Parenthood is consistently under fire all of these organizations that provide this type of care to women are going to be the first ones threatened so a couple of things with that so first is at least from my social media timeline and it's not strictly people I follow because it's on my TikTok it's on my for you page it's whatever it's a lot of women Um, and people who are trans and just like a bunch of different groups are affected by this are coming up with their stories and saying like oh you haven't been raped by a football team when you were 13 and unconscious you don't get rights or like you don't get a say on this and all this other stuff and it's never been someone for it but I've seen a lot of people who say oh this one supreme court justice who voted against this I'm so scared that maybe gay right laws or something after that are going to be affected and I'm scared that maybe I won't be able to have children or I can't marry my wife or on the opposite end straight couples are like hey we need to figure something out you might have to get a vasectomy or something because I won't be able to carry the weight and we aren't financially in a position to do this and a lot of other people who have been in foster care or been with parents who shouldn't have been parents at the time still support this. They're like, I shouldn't have been born in the situation I was born in. Because that's traumatic. And there's so much more going on than that. But I did a story um, in 2020 when both presidents were running. And I did a whole series dedicated to each person and their perspectives on abortion and gun laws and all this other stuff. And then I talked to people who actually worked in the fields that were affected by these different views. And I talked to a doctor in Washington. His name is actually Charlie Brown. So he is Dr. Brown, which is really cute. But he worked, <laughs> he works in an abortion clinic. He invited me to go see it. But he said, it's not what people think it is. It's not just like women go and they're like, ah, time to murder my kid today, lol. And then that's what happens. He was like, a lot of women have been raped. A lot of it is incest. A lot of it is very traumatic. And they are crying during the procedure. And emotionally, it is so hard on them. Because maybe they wanted the kid and the body just couldn't support it. Or the kid would have been in pain every single day if it was born. Like, there's so much more that goes into it. And he invited me to go see it. And he had to say, oh, well, we don't use the fetuses or whatever comes out to run power. Some of those weird, like, conspiracy theories that were out there that get done. He was just like, it's just... Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And as men, it's not our right to say what a woman does because we can't produce these babies. We've never felt what that feels like. Like, that is up to them to choose. I was like, you're so right. (laughs) Yeah, and it's it's crazy that that's something that even has to be said. Like, the person that is suffering the pain is going to tell you the pain that they are feeling. You don't go up to somebody with a broken leg and be like, dog, your leg's not that broken. Like, I've seen worse. Or like oh, your leg's broken? Well, I know someone that was born without a leg. And it's like, homie, I'm the one with the broken leg. What are you talking about? So frustrating because on one end, invalidating anyone's pain in any sort of instance isn't good. Or outdoing someone on what they're feeling isn't good. And I've had people in my life who have been worried that they might be pregnant and that they literally, like their parents would literally have murdered them if that had happened because we've been in high school and stuff. And I'm from Missouri. And as far as I know, there is one abortion clinic in that whole state because they are so against it. 
because it's a religious thing and Missouri is on average very religious compared to the rest of the world um, or just the Midwest and South in general. And it's so frustrating to see one that men are voting on this issue, white straight men, that's not good. Two, that clearly not a single woman wants this because the nice thing about Roe v. Wade is it's pro choice. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to, just like our Second Amendment. If you don't want to own guns, you don't have to. It's our choice to make. No one's forcing you to have a procedure done. And it's not going to stop abortion. It's going to stop safe abortions. Yeah. And back when we had this happen, before Roe v. Wade was put in place and everything, I've seen stories of women who have literally been sexually assaulted and stuff just to make sure that they didn't have a kid and ruin their chance at college or whatever because back then having kids before you were married was extremely bad once again a religious and cultural thing yeah. and now we're back in the same boat after all of these women have fought for generations trying to make sure that didn't happen and I here mean, we are I mean, yes and you're very right and this is a topic that i feel like i never really had the choice to view in any other way than the like the way that i view it now because when I was in middle school, there was a girl who had a pregnancy scare when we were in seventh grade. She was 12. She was going out with some guy that she should not have been seeing, way too old for a 12-year-old to be dating. And she had a pregnancy scare, and her parents kicked her out at 12 years old. And this girl looked up and, you know, told us, and, and this is in confidence, I've, I'm not saying, like, at, at this this is such a like awful story to even think about, but I think about her a lot because she told us that she had been going to the public library to look up how to force a miscarriage in case she were actually pregnant. This is a 12 year old, dude. Like she had no access to anything. And this is of course, like you said, in an area that's conservative, an area that's not understanding, an area with not a lot of resources. And this poor girl, at 12 years old, is trying to figure out how to deal with it by herself because she got kicked out. Yeah, I had a friend in high school. Mm -hmm. She probably would have been 15 or 16, go through the same thing. She had to take a pregnancy test. She was looking up different ways to abort it, and that was like overdosing on vitamin C or whatever that one thing is. And so she did that because she was scared that it would have happened. And plan B, even though it's an option, it's very expensive. And if you're over a certain weight, you have to take more to make it effective, which also isn't advertised. So that's probably caused so many issues. And in taking and more than the recommended dose is also dangerous because, again, it's all hormonal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, all right? And this may or may not be a hot take. It's not a take that I've ever hidden. It's, you know, it's who I am as a person. It doesn't even have to resort to these, like, sob stories of women who are in immeasurable, immeasurable amounts of pain and turmoil. If I, as a grown adult married woman, were to get pregnant at a point in my life that I do not want a child because of just me simply not liking children, I would get that hoe aborted so fast. I don't want it. That's it. No pain, no anything. I simply do not want to birth a child. It's that simple. I don't want to have a parasite in me for nine months and then have to go through it ripping me out essentially from the inside. If I don't want to go through that, I shouldn't have to. That simple. You're calling it a parasite. Um, so on the opposite <laughs> spectrum, I do want kids. I eventually want a big family. However, I'm 20. I plan mm -hmm. on going to law school. I would love to buy a car. I would love to buy a house. That causes immense amount of debt. And I would not be in a position right now to bear and give a child a good life unless I had the type of support for my parents and stuff financially that I do now. And so it's not fair to be like, ah, we'll mm -hmm. just have it anyways. Put them in the foster care system, like whatever. Foster care system is terrible. And this is coming from a criminal justice major. I study this. I pay money to learn about this. I've talked to people who work in this system. It's not a good system to be in. They don't get resources you're more likely to get arrested and go to jail because you grow up in such terrible parts of town and it's so traumatic that you typically resort to drugs and alcohol and work the streets to get that and it's so bad it's so bad and the people who are saying this aren't adopting i would be open to adopting because the world's ending anyways you know whatever, yeah, whatever. but these people never do because they're like why would i do that 
And I was like, ugh. ugh. Well, so here's the thing. I would not mind adopting a child at some point, right? I would not mind doing it through a surrogate. I wouldn't mind. At this point in life, I do not want to birth a child. Maybe I'll change my mind in the future, which is why being pro-choice is important, right? And I grew up, again, a lot of my political views were formed in middle school, honestly. I grew up in a neighborhood neighboring a foster community. Some of the kids had phenomenal families. They treated them lovingly. I see what they're up to now and they're thriving, they're successful. Other kids got stuck in the type of foster family that's kind of only in it for the money or for ulterior motives or just because that's like the thing to do or the housing, whatever. And these kids were not cared for. And like you said, unfortunately, a lot of them turned to substance abuse. A lot of them turned to crime. A lot of them got arrested trying to run away from the foster home. And like being that age and seeing kids your own age suffer through the system that is so unfair is heartbreaking. And it's like, if, if you're not fit to raise your own child, why would you like force them to be born and subject them to that sort of life? Not to mention, though, that even the ones that did have like, you know, a really nice host family still had to go through like the psychological like impact of knowing that they're not in their own home. Like those kids like that did everything right, that were just trying to make it out. They still like struggle with that themselves of like, yeah, you know, well, my parents are just like, you know, they, they couldn't take care of me. And they were like uh, understandably upset about it. And it's like, homie, if you can't take care of your child, don't have it. Yeah. And it when I found that out, it just it genuinely made me frustrated. Like the clip of Elizabeth Warren literally tears coming out with her screaming. That's how I felt because one, I'm a woman. You're yes. a woman. We that's against us. So that's already a hit. But I'm a criminal justice and psychology major. I've I study this. I've seen the stories. I've read the books. I've talked to the people. And I'm like, it's not fair that these political people who supposedly know all there is to know are doing this because if you knew all there is to know you wouldn't want to put people through that pain and washington is more progressive i'm putting air quotes for those who can't see me compared to other states because we think like oh well if they ran away they shouldn't be thrown in jail there's other programs and stuff that we can do instead a lot of states aren't doing that and a lot of the states that are getting rid of roe v wade aren't doing that. They're not progressive. Their criminal justice systems are terrible. Their healthcare coverage is terrible. And that goes for mental health as well. So it's almost in a sense of why do we keep going through this? Because it's not just a little like, ah, well, like this is fine. Or we can keep making comments about women's bodies or what women wear and what women do because who cares, right? Like it's just little things, but it's not little things because every single day, when you're told what you can and can't wear, how you're supposed to act, what religion you're supposed to follow, what you can and can't do with your body, what you're supposed to do with the kid you can't support and give them a lifetime of trauma, but not be able to emotionally or like money-wise afford to do that. How is that, how is that fair to anyone and the future generations? It's not, and that's what it comes down to. And again, it's so frustrating to see that we're still in this, like the court already decided How are you going to overturn a decision that no one's really challenging except for people who are not women, who are not at risk? And again, whenever you have the the progress that we've had in science and in research to support the fact that this is an important thing that needs to remain for the sake and the health and the safety of women, there's, there's no argument to overturn it. Every single thing that you see is religious. There's there's no other way around it. I saw a thing, a thing, sorry, an article, like it was it wasn't just like, you know, a casual like, oh, a sentence here on the comments. No, it was like I was reading an article about when someone is legally declared dead as an organ donor or not whenever you are hospitalized and are discovered to be brain dead. In essence, if there is no brain activity, there is the the opportunity, the possibility that you will be declared dead, taken off of life support, and that's where it ends. The argument that a lot of people make, if it's not religious, is 
in support of the heartbeat bill in which once the heartbeat forms, an abortion would be murder. However, if there is no cognitive function, it's not legally alive. So that argument is also invalid. And so even, even arguments like that that try to claim different aspects of biology are very much manipulating like the facts as they stand to support their cause in the most convoluted and just in uh insufficient way yes like there's genuinely no argument for it which is why i'm so appalled that this has gone as strongly as it has even on the religious aspect um clearly in the bible it says life begins at first breath one but also i believe it's in the Jewish religion, the Roe v. Wade bill technically goes against their religion for similar reasons because they're like, well, this isn't what we believe in and this isn't what our religion believes in. So how are laws going to say this when it distinctly goes against what our religion says and what we believe happened thousands of years ago or whatever? So I'm like, not only are you using wrong religion context, but you're also going against other people's religions with the words and what you're doing with this bill. Which doesn't make sense. Exactly. And I, I've been seeing a lot of memes that I thought were really funny. My favorite one, of course, being, y'all know we just celebrated Easter, right? That's literally God sacrificing his own son for y'all's sins. And y'all want to talk about murder? <laughs> I was like, oh, we know. But, I mean, you're right. Like, even even in religion, there's different arguments that could be made for either either side. However, religion is not a legal, uh, like it's not a firm legal standing ground. Religion is just your own personal belief. You're telling me that you're gonna let the, uh, what do they call themselves, the, the spaghetti monster people? Uh, Pastafarians. You're telling me you're gonna let Pastafarians dictate laws because they believe in a flying spaghetti monster in space? Yes. That makes sense to you? Yes. <laughs> Um, my favorite thing about this is a lot of people are now promoting for you to become mm-hmm. like a devil worshiper, essentially, because under that religion, abortion is good. So if you sign up on their little website, you're like, hey, I believe in the devil. They, you get a card and legally, they can't stop you from having an abortion if it's your religious belief to have one. Because the United States works like that. Yeah. So all of these people are like, here are religions that support abortion. Sign up and join them today. And one TikTok I saw. The Church of Satan. Kind of a meme. Yes. <laughs> the TikTok I saw um, was like, all right, they want to get rid of women's rights. We have to join a religion that supports it, whatever. But also, what if, if we can't do anything and we're reverting back to the 40s and 50s, women should simply stop working? Because clearly, they can survive without us. They don't need us for the economy. We can just go back and make our little bread and feed our little children. And the men can carry it all. Like, we're not needed. And I was like, you're so right. Like, if we literally just completely yeeted all the way back to where we couldn't vote and whatever, our economy would literally die. Like, Mm. the United States would collapse. So why do they think they could hold us over us when we could literally just stop? What are they going to do? They can't do anything. I would love to see every time that something happens politically that puts a marginalized community at risk i'm like i just wish that we had the like ability and we do it's just hard to do things in a proper way but would could you imagine if we actually mobilize that like every single woman ever all right simply do not do things for like not a day because like the day of inaction like is is you know it's it's been done do it for a week i know it's not practical for a lot of people but do it for a week and see what happens. Because if we you, would lose so many people. Dude, if you look at like historical impact, like sure, right? Like honestly, protesting and rioting has been what has resulted in change. Because that's you know, it's it's one thing to to vote in a politician who says they're gonna do something, and then it's met with something like this in the Supreme Court, where it's the result of the previous uh presidency. It's another thing to actually show the impact because then you can use that to negotiate, right? Because if you if you were to just simply focus on the fact that if you're forcing women to go through with giving birth, you're also going to then have to face women needing maternity leave. 
and parent and fathers needing paternity leave, which is not something that's offered in the U.S. You're facing essentially all of these people who are going to have to cater to all of these children in a system that is not set up to back people up when they are taking care of their children. Our entire system is essentially grind don't stop, which is toxic and awful and is not conducive to any sort of success because people just get burnt out. You can't have productivity and also have people that need to like take time for themselves to create and raise life. <clears throat> it's very difficult because let's say women do stop working. You are losing teachers that teach the youth. You are losing nurses, the people who help get babies out of you. Like you <laughs> are losing your whole support system everywhere. And I know there are countries right now who are having the issue where, you know, millennials and Gen Z don't want kids because it's like, uh, as you called it, a parasite ripping up your organs. Yeah, ew. People are just aren't into that. And so now some countries are saying like, hey, we will give you money. We'll do so much for you to give kids because we built our infrastructure around so many people and now we don't have enough to support it and that's an issue. So I'm like, in the United States, we have enough people. We have people who want to move here to take over these jobs and stuff to help with that. Forcing people to have children isn't going to, like, we already have issues with overpopulation here, especially with things like climate change. We're not going to be able to support all of these people anyways. And in the future, I bet you when resources like water and food get limited, the government's going to limit how many people can have children. And then that will be okay. But they won't call it abortion. They'll call it something else because this is for the better political benefit of everyone else. I mean, do you remember learning that, like, I think in China, they can only have one kid per family or something like that. Yeah, and if it's not a boy, typically you get disowned or whatever you want to do until you get a boy. Insane. Yeah. And the U.S. has such, like, negative views on other countries that do things like this, that control what people can or cannot do with their lives. And yet, you have something like this come up. And it's the exact opposite in which it's like, no, you are going to have every child that is conceived. But it's like, bro, you're doing the same thing you're complaining about other countries doing. Yeah. And I, there are countries that handle the criminal justice system better <clears throat> than others. There are countries who do it better than the U.S. U.S. does it better than some of the other countries. Whatever. All right. But if a majority of people the ones who are pooping out little babies say, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. And all of these men are like, mm, sorry, didn't hear you. I don't have my eyes right now. I'm just going to say yes. Sorry, besties. <laughs> like, how is how do you not see this? <laughs> Listen, I feel like right now we have people who are on our side and we have the people that are saying, yes, women, please take a day off so that they don't have to listen to podcasts like this one. But at the end of the day, you know, none of y'all would exist. None of us would exist if it wasn't for women, right? So True. maybe listen to the women when they tell you what it is that they need and what they want. Listen, like if someone wants to be my super rich husband or wife, I guess not wife because women are canceled so just husband <laughs> i will go back to being a little 1950s housewife i'll cook and clean but i'm not lifting a finger to make money for the house and i have expensive taste so if someone wants to cover that that's fine do it but you gotta revert all the way back i'm not doing half seas all right we either go for it or we don't <laughs> <laughs> i'm talking joint bank account with unlimited spending man literally because i'm like if i'm gonna go back to just baking bread and taking care of kids all day i'm gonna need like cute shoes cute dresses jewelry the whole shenanigan you know but now because it's 2022 <laughs> so i'm going to law school to help people who are in this situation and help the minorities because i'm like it's not fair that you're getting screwed over by a system that's purposely made complicated so that people don't understand it to be taken advantage of and i hate that so i want to change that <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, and listen, it's not going to be one person that changes the world, but that's, I think, a really dumb reason to not do something because there's a, if there's a lot of individuals that are this type of person that want to change the world, there's power in numbers. You're not alone in, in this fight. 
and I, I have this argument. We were originally going to talk about Earth Day stuff when you were going to be on the show. Do you remember when that was the thing? We were going to have little goldfish filters and be little fishies talking about the planet. Closed. <laughs> yeah. And now we're here. But like, even even for example, with that one, people are like, oh, well, just because I recycle doesn't mean that I'm saving the world. It's the corporations. It's like, yeah, man. But at least you're doing your part. At least you're doing what you can to help. And doesn't doing one good deed just simply feel good? Like... Bro. Yeah, and my favorite quote, if we go back to this little Earth Day topic, is from a YouTuber. Her name is Shelby, and essentially it says, we cannot do all the good that the Earth needs, but it needs all the good that we can do. So it doesn't matter how hard you're trying, how hard of a difference you're making in everyone else's life. If you are personally doing something, if you're personally donating to different campaigns, if you are protesting, if you're spreading the word and educating other people on whatever it is, you are doing your part, and eventually that's going to go to bigger companies. And bigger companies, especially since social media got super big, a lot of companies are posting their political opinions, like Elle and all these other fashion magazines. They're like, hey, we also support abortion, and this isn't cool. And they have a bigger audience. And so it just keeps growing. So one day, hopefully we're like, hey, besties, we'd like our rights back. And then the Supreme Court will be like, mm, I guess we can do that, but we're going to just try to keep fighting it for the rest of your life. And we'll be like, ah, at least we got the bare minimum again. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. It's like Valorant, but you're in a comp match and it's 12 to 12 and you're overtime. That's how it feels in the United States. I feel like I'm in overtime right now and we are just equal with the government. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a full podcast with Mac if we didn't find a way to talk about Valorant um but also in reference to referencing other things that we've said I think this is the third week in a row that I mentioned the frustration of living in a society when we really were just put on this planet to take naps and eat berries dude I did that the other day took did my little nap, food and some chocolate took a nap it was so good oh I'm so happy for you I'm I'm almost in the take nap eat berry uh era of my life, by which I mean I'm graduating. <laughs> but you know, in the meantime, I feel like I feel like it's unfortunate that this is all happening right as like I said, our generation is entering the world like as individuals on our own. Cause, you know. Again, I didn't choose to be born into this time and space. Imagine if I simply was not born. Sorry, Your life would be Happy so Mother's easy. Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, on a good note, I don't know if everyone will think this is a good note. My oldest sister sent me a TikTok the other day, and she was like, good news, guys, for all the millennials and Gen Z out there. Um, so many boomers are going to die by 2024, which gives us a 15 million person voter swing and most of us are liberal so i'm like maybe in a couple of years we can start taking over and doing what we believe which is basic human rights instead of just trashing everyone because we're selfish hell yeah i love having rights i don't know what that feels like sorry <laughs> <laughs> man oh man i feel like yeah whatever we've we've said what we came to say i think do you have anything else you'd like to add to this topic? Um, for anyone interested or needs it, Planned Parenthood is a very good resource. It's not just a city full of abortions. They can also give you annual breast exams and stuff for cancer. Um, this is for of all genders. You can get birth control there. They do so much more. Basically, everything we covered about what Roe v. Wade covers is what abortion and all these other topics that Planned Parenthood also covers, but they cover in a healthy way because they love you and they care about you. And they will do a lot of stuff for free, whether you have insurance or not, and they're just a very good resource. And you can also do more research if you feel like donating. There are so many abortion clinics and Planned Parenthoods across the country who are willing to take money to help people out as fast as they can before everything's overturned. So just do your part if you feel inclined. If not... If you see a Supreme Court justice that voted against it, give him a little bop on the head for me. <laughs> the podcast does not support violence. But Mac does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mac. Well, don't do anything that you'll regret. But speaking of regret, 
let's wind down with one more song for the night. What are we listening to? Um, so it's a band called The Regrets. That's why Carly is so funny, guys. Um, and it's a song that's been stuck on repeat for me. But it's called Barely On My Mind. So I hope you enjoy. All right. Without further ado, here is Barely On My Mind by The Regrets. My mother likes your episodes, so you know you have the mom seal of approval on this fine. Happy Mother's Day, Day to Carly's mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to my mother only. That's a lie. Happy Mother's Day to all your mothers. And my mom. Yes. Um. In the word. Uh. In the in the words of Vanilla Ice. Word to your mother. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but yes, as we were talking during our about during our song break, <clears throat> we're both getting ready to go off into the world. I'll be graduating as of next Tuesday. I'm done with school probably forever. I don't particularly think I'll do grad school. I don't want to be a professor or anything. And in the artistic field, you get more done by getting stuff done, if that makes sense. Maybe someday when I'm old and bored, I'll go back to school. Same as uh, the possibilities of me having a child when I'm old and bored. Um, <laughs> Mac, you have another year left, though, and then... You have gap years coming up, and then you are doing grad school. Yeah, because law school is so expensive. I'm graduating a year early, um, so I hate thinking about it as lost time, but it's kind of frowned upon if you're not immediately going into school and stuff, especially in America, and it's weird graduating a year before my friends, but still delaying when I'm pursuing that because I don't want to be in debt, because living in this economy is so expensive, but... We're going to make it work anyways. I think you got it, man. I had three years off of school between high school and now. um, Because life, you know, money, as you mentioned. But you'll make it work. I also had a friend that did what you're doing right now. Took a couple of years off to save up money for grad school. She did it. She's doing great. She's at Clemson now, having the time of her life. So it's not the worst. Like, for at least the... For grad school, I feel like it's not as weird to take that gap year or two. Um, it's just about whether or not you can get yourself back in the swing of things once you do return to school. Yeah, especially for law school. Luckily, it's only three years. I originally was going for a doctorate, which is like seven. But it's a lot of work. Is tough living off of loans that whole time because you're not allowed to work when you're pursuing a grad degree and stuff. Um I live in Washington State, which is also just very expensive, but this is where I want to practice. This is where I have to go to school, all of that stuff. Um, and no one, obviously, Carly knows this, but our friend group this last couple of weeks has just been like, living is so expensive. I don't know how any of us are going to afford housing or just survive um, over the next years, and especially how our kids or parasites, as Carly called them would be able to pursue something like that, which is another reason Roe v. Wade is so messy. If people can barely afford to live now, how do we expect our future generations to be better off than us when we are, like, 50% of millennials to live with their parents because there's no other options. Everything's so expensive. It's a tough life. I almost, I'm 20, I almost considered buying a house instead of going to law school because I was like, what if I can't afford anything else when I'm older with the amount of debt I'm going to get and my mom had to talk me out of it listen there are options not all of them are good (laughs) time it seemed good there was so much for it and so much against it it was just a very difficult time so hopefully the plan is i propose to doja cat in august during her concert she'll be like yes i marry you we'll get two incomes going and i'll barely be able to survive somewhere bare minimum right right so i mean if all else fails mac like you said you've got a pretty good plan of uh just baking bread and if anyone's out there listening i'm a single girly in my 20s i love men and women hit me up if you want a housewife (laughs) (laughs) y'all heard it here first this is now officially a dating ad um, Carly, for a podcast, you should do a blind date thing where they can't see each other, but they're just talking, and you're like conducting yeah, the conversation. That would be so fun. That would be actually really fun. 
I should do that for sure. I also saw a thing where uh, you essentially host a fake job interview, but the person doesn't know what job they're interviewing for. So you ask questions like, you know, what was your biggest project? What's your biggest regret? What are your strengths? And people say things that like they think are good for general work stuff, but then the job will be something completely obscure that makes you sound unhinged in context. Yes, I yes. love that. We also need to do <laughs> bomb diffusal thing again because that was so funny oh, last time. Oh, we should. I am so excited. To, as of tomorrow, I'll be done with uh, the project the project that I've been working on, which means that I'll have uh, a little bit of time to just kind of be on the internet and have fun and do things. Um, so we should totally do bomb diffusal. Valorant Tuesday will be back. Um, if you're listening uh, to the radio station and not watching the behind the scenes on Twitch, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash carlygirl. That's K-A-R-L-Y-G-I-I-R-L. And you can keep up with that or you can keep up with updates on the podcast at Twitter slash P-O-D-K-A-S-T-X-K. That's podcast by K. Um, where you get to see more of Mac because Mac is a recurring guest and also a fellow hashtag gamer girl. Um, yes. So like you said, bomb defusal game or Valorant Tuesday or uh, random chaotic speed dating, whatever it is, there's something for everyone. Just like the podcast is a bit of a variety show, my Twitch streams are a bit of a variety show. We do lots, except my issue is I'm leaving Wednesday and I might be coming back in June, so we will not be able to play games for a while. (laughs) Well, we know whenever you return, we'll be here waiting for you. (sighs) You wait, you're leaving Wednesday? My best friend comes in Wednesday. Great, so I'm done on Monday. We can play games on Tuesday. (laughs) I'm doing, I'm getting my hair and stuff done, but I can probably play Tuesday night. Wow, imagine getting your hair done instead of playing video games. Oils like the hair badly doesn't grow naturally out of my head, and neither does the brunette, so we gotta fix that. (laughs) (laughs) For context, dear listeners, Mac is a natural blonde that somehow hates being blonde. This just looks so much better. She does flop brunette really well. But, alas, I digress. Our time is drawing to a close. Mac, any final closing remarks and or statements, shout outs, anything at all? Um, I hope everyone has a great night. Take care of yourself. I know the world seems like it's falling in and on itself all the time, but self-care is very important. Not all of that falls on you, but you can always do your part. And if you don't feel like it that day, just... Eat some berries and take a nap like we were put on this earth to do. <laughs> Thank you, Mac, for being on the show. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone that hung out in the chat on Twitch. Thank you to everyone that has ever even, you know, skipped past us on the channel dial. You're listening to Podcast with a K. This is Carla with a K signing off for the penultimate time. Tune in next week. Maybe new nonsense, maybe new guests. Regardless, there's still a finale to come. I will see you guys. Have a fantastic week. Here is WECS 90.1 FM. Have a good night. And that's the show. Please hold.